One thing that powered parachutes and powered paragliders have in common is a higher than average occurrence of what aviation mechanics refer to as a sudden stoppage of a propeller. Pilots call them prop strikes. We're going to talk about what they are, how they happen, and what to do if one happens to you, and we're going to do that right now. In aviation, a propeller strike or prop strike is an accident in which an aircraft's propeller contacts any object and is forcibly stopped or slowed. This happens more often to powered parachutes and paramotors than it happens to almost any other kind of aircraft out there. This is because both sports are using big, floppy fabric wings and risers that occasionally find themselves in the way of a spinning propeller. Both aircraft have prop cages or fan guards to prevent that from happening. But perversely, sometimes the pull of a wing to one side manages to pull on and deform the cages enough to involve them in the noise and mayhem of a sudden stop. Most of the time, a pilot is immediately less concerned with the engine and is more concerned with the obvious damage to the propeller, which is often destroyed, the risers or lines, and the traitorous fan guards and cages that fail to prevent the damage in the first place. But the stoppage could do some bad things to the insides of an engine and gearbox, too. There's a lot of energy in a spinning propeller, and if it stops suddenly, a lot of forces are going to be cut loose across the entire powertrain. So let's begin with a definition of a propeller strike. This comes to us from Rotax. In fact, they just updated their service letter detailing what a prop strike is and what to do in case of a prop strike. I'll link to that in the description. The letter applies to both their two-stroke and four-stroke engines. Since the majority of powered parachutes use Rotax engines, this makes their guidance pretty generic for all powered parachute owners. And face it, the physics doesn't really care what the brand name of the engine is. So if the company building your powered parachute or paramotor engine doesn't offer any specific advice, use the advice offered here. Rotax says that a propeller strike can be defined as follows. One, any case in which the engine is operating and the propeller impacts on an object which causes a considerable drop in engine RPM. Propeller strikes on the ground or by contacting various objects can result in engine and component damage even if the propeller may continue to rotate. Such damage may progress to engine failure. Two, any incident whether or not the engine is operating. For example, damage due to contact with foreign objects, a landing gear failure, those kinds of things. That requires the removal of a propeller for repair. Also, if a propeller governor is installed, it must be inspected and repaired in accordance with the propeller governor manufacturer's published instructions. And finally, three, any incident with a sudden RPM drop while impacting water, tall grass, or other similar medium where the visible damage to the propeller structure has not occurred. It covers a lot of ground. While not specifically mentioned, causes of propeller strikes include a parachute or parachute lines getting caught in the prop arc and stopping the engine. This happens often on launch when a parachute or paraglider wing doesn't come up straight. It also happens when a pilot doesn't or can't shut the engine down immediately after landing. There are a couple of factors that affect how potentially serious a propeller strike is. It has to do with how much energy the engine and gearbox have to absorb. Let's talk about that. And as we're going along here, if you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to give me an upvote. Your subscription to the channel and your likes for the videos are highly motivational to me. Thanks so much. Well, the first factor is mentioned by Rotax. They point out that propeller construction should be considered when assessing possible engine damage from a propeller strike. For example, aluminum and solid composite, including some solid wood propellers, are more likely to transmit the force and damage to an engine due to their large mass and strength. Lightweight composite propellers with wood or foam cores are less likely to transmit forces to the engine as they tend to disintegrate upon impact. The disintegration itself is what is absorbing the forces instead. If no drop in RPM is detected and a lightweight propeller is damaged from a strike, it is possible that there is no resulting engine damage. But there are other factors. One aspect of the force equation is exactly how much force is being stopped. A fast spinning propeller contains a lot of energy. Slowing it down rapidly requires a lot of force. A slower moving propeller, like when an engine is idling just before shutdown or during a taxi, isn't going to have a lot of energy and it won't take a lot of force to slow it down. Another factor is exactly how sudden the sudden is. In other words, how much of an impact is the propeller making on an object? For example, a propeller hitting the ground is going to be one of the worst sorts of impact because of the hardness of the ground and the immediacy of the stop. Parachute lines getting tangled in a propeller are going to be far more gentle while slowing the engine down or stopping it. So what do you do if your engine suffers a propeller strike? Well, that depends upon the engine. 
Rotax says that if it is determined that a propeller strike has occurred, the engine must be inspected, repaired, and overhauled to the extent necessary to bring it back to serviceable condition before further flight. The specific steps are normally outlined in maintenance manuals. For Rotax engines, all work has to be performed in accordance with the relevant maintenance manual line or maintenance manual heavy manuals. Often that means removing the gearbox and inspecting it for damage. In addition, the engine itself needs to be inspected, starting with checking to see if the PTO shaft is out around. There's a lot to it. It is often enough work that you will want a mechanic specializing in that particular engine to look at it. Perhaps it will be the subject of a future video or two. Meanwhile, what happens if you don't inspect your aircraft engine after propeller strike? Well, perhaps nothing. Or perhaps a lot. It depends upon what happened inside the engine. The a lot includes an early engine failure while in flight. Definitely something you don't want to experience. Finally, if you are interested in powered parachute flight instruction in either the Midwest or in Florida, please visit the link to easyflight.com in the comments. After all, prop strikes are something we try to prevent through good training. And please remember to grace me with your upvote. Thanks so much for watching and blue skies.